Glory, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. Just to be in the presence of the Lord. Another day just to give him the thanks right now and all the praise and all the glory. I don't know about you today, my sisters. I don't know about you today, my brothers. But I feel so excited right now just to be in his presence right now. Do you feel excited just to be in his presence right now? Are you ready to give God the thanks right now? Are you ready to give God the praise right now? Are you ready to give God the glory right now? Are you ready to magnify and shout out his holy name right now? Are you ready to exalt his holy name? Are you ready to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus? Today is the day that you have made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Glory to God. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a faithful God. We serve an on time, the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, God. We serve a God who never leave us or forsake us. We serve a God that we always can count and depend and allow him because the word of God says his words are true. His promises are true. And that we can ask anything in his name. And he will do it for every last one of us that abide in him and he abide in us and we abide in his words and his words abide in us. Right now, my sisters, right now, my brothers, I don't know about you, if you are really, really excited to give God the thanks and give him the praise, I want you to open up your mouth right now today and I want you to give Jesus a shout out of praise like he never shouted out before. I want you to give Jesus a shout out of glory right now like he never shouted out before. I want you to raise your voice and say glory, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. I can't do it without you, Jesus. I can't make it without you, Jesus. I can't comprehend without you, Jesus. Jesus, I am counting on you right now today. I'm depending on you right now today. I'm relying on you right now today, Jesus. You are my backbone. You are my help. You are my provider. You are my refuge. You are my salvation. You are my everything. Glory, hallelujah. I want more of you, Jesus and I want less of me. God, you continue to guide and direct my every footsteps, God. God, you continue to have your way with me, God. God, let your will be done. Whatever it is, is done in heaven, let it manifest on earth right now today, God. But right now, God, uh, we want to say thank you. 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 Oh, help me, God, I want to say thank you. I get so excited by thanking Jesus. I get so excited by praising his holy name. I get so excited by worshiping him. But I don't do it on one day. I do it on Mondays. I do it on Tuesdays. I do it on Wednesdays. I do it on Thursdays. I do it on Fridays. I do it on Saturdays. I do it on Sundays. I do it every day of the week as long as... As long as I have breath, as long as I have um, strength, I'm going to worship Jesus. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to exalt him. I'm going to magnify his name. I'm going to lift his name up high. It doesn't matter if you want to help me or not, my brothers. It doesn't matter if you want to help me or not, my sisters. My mouth is big enough to give God the thanks. My mouth is big enough to give God the praise. My mouth is big enough to give God all the glory and hallelujah. So that's why I thank him the way I do. Do. That's why I praise him the way I do because I wouldn't be here right now today if it weren't for Jesus. My story could have ended a long time ago, but God had his hand on me. God said, oh no, I got to save you for something. You are my masterpiece. I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to protect you. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to shield you. And I say thank you for that, Jesus. My time should have been done a long time ago, but it's because God, grace and mercy. That's why I'm here today. It's because of God, grace and mercy. That's why you here today my sisters, my brothers. So in the midst of what I'm saying, I need you right now. Just don't do it because I'm telling you to do it. But if you really, really, really in love with Jesus, if you are really, really, really infatuated with Jesus, you will thank him right now. You will praise him right now. You will glorify his holy name right now. You are magnify and exalt his holy name right now for who he is and what he has done and what he is doing right now because I know for a fact that God is in this place right now. I believe right now today that God is in our house right now. He is touching all my sisters right now. 
He is touching all my brothers right now. He is touching me right now because it is Jesus that's preaching this word on air. It ain't me that's talking. It is Jesus that's talking. It ain't me that's praising. It's Jesus that's praising because Jesus lives in every last one of us. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to thank him. I'm going to praise him each and every day. Some of y'all want to thank and praise him when it's convenient for you. Some of you want to thank and praise him when things are going good. Some of you want to thank and praise him when you need help. But I thank him. I thank and praise him for who he is because I'm in love with Jesus. I have a, a intimate relationship with Jesus. I don't have to wait to thank him to see the blessing. I thank him because the blessing's already here. I ain't got to thank him and praise him when I see the breakthrough of the miracle, I know that the miracle and the, and the breakthrough is already here. So that's why I thank him the way I do. That's why I lift his name up high the way I do because it's already here. And when you know deep down in your spirit that God has already worked it out, when you know deep down in your spirit that God has already had favor on you, when you know deep down in your spirit that this is your time, this is your due season, that God is about to show up and show up in your life, you don't have to wait to see it. You thank him in in advance, you praise him in advance like you know that God has already done it for you. Come on, my sisters. Come on, my brothers. That's what praise is all about. Praising him. Worshiping him during the good times. During the bad times. Anybody can thank God when it's good. Anybody can praise him when it's good. But can you thank him and praise him when it's not good? Can you thank and praise him when you're in the bottom of the pit? Can you thank and praise him when you hit rock bottom? Can you thank and praise him when you can't be able to pay your bills on time? Can you can you can you thank and praise him in the midst of your storm? Can you praise him in the wilderness? Can you praise him when you're in that dark and ugly place? Can you praise him when you don't know what's going on, but God, but you're still walking with God anyway? You say, God, I don't know where you lead me to, but God, I'm still walking with you. I'm, I'm still walking with you anyway. God, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm still trusting you anyway. That when God say, I have my eyes on them because they don't know where I'm guiding them to. They don't know where I'm leading them to, but they still walking with me. They still praising with me. They still worshiping me. When I turn my head, they still right there. If I turn my eye to the left or to the right, they still right there. And God said, I can trust them even when they're in trouble. I can trust them even though things not adding up. I can trust them when things not add, making, making sense to them, but they still right there walking with me anyway. Jesus said, I can trust them. Could Jesus trust you right now? Jesus can't trust everybody because everybody can't handle the pain. Everybody can't handle the suffering. Everybody can't handle the struggle. Everybody can't handle hardship. It take a real man and a real woman with, with persevering faith to go through something like that and still be right here to thank and praise him. Jesus, I can trust them. I got my eye on them. Right now, give God the thanks and praise and glory because he deserves it all each and every day. It doesn't matter how many times you thank him. It doesn't matter how many times you praise and worship him. You can thank him and praise and worship and exalt his holy name as much as you want. God loves a cheerful giver. He ain't talking about money as some of these preachers talking about. God is talking about a cheerful giver like why you thanking him and praise him. That's what he like. God don't like about no money because God is not about money. Some of y'all right now today, you got to stop listening to these washed down, these washed down preachers right now today because that's the first thing they say. Oh, God love a cheerful giver. He ain't talking about no money. Man is talking about money. God is talking about thanking him and praising him and worshiping him and exalt his holy name. That's what God is talking about, that he loves a cheerful giver. Are you a cheerful giver today, my brothers? Are you a cheerful giver right now today, my sisters? Because I'm a cheerful giver every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. I want you to say it like you mean it. I want you to hold your hammers up. And repeat after me. This is my hammer that breaks down everything that stands in my way. Even the enemy and the haters cannot do anything to me as long as my hammer is with me. My hammer holds my blessing. My hammer holds my breakthrough. My hammer holds my miracle. And it tells me everything what I need to know 
and it will not prove false to me whatsoever. I pray with my hammer. I trust my hammer. I listen to my hammer. My hammer is my guide. My hammer is my light. My hammer is my protector. If you turn your Bible to Jeremiah 23, 29, the word of God says, my words are like fire and the hammer that breaks down everything that stands in your way. And this is your hammer, the word of God. This is your hammer, my brothers, my sisters. Start using it. Apply it to it each and every day. Pick it up every day. Use it every day. I abide in it every day. It's going to abide to you. It's going to open your eyes to something that you never thought was even there. It's going to open your heart to a whole nother level. Don't take my word for it. I want you to try it for yourself. That's why I love everything about my hammer. Amen? Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just came thanking up for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I came thanking up for this anointing word right now, this beautiful message right now. I just came thanking up for the air that we're able to breathe right now. I just came thanking up, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I came thanking up for your words, Jesus. I came thanking up for your promises, Jesus. I came thanking up for our help and our strength. I came thanking up for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, the clothes and shoes that you have put on that bag. I just came thinking of Jesus, how you making the way out of no way. I just came thinking of Jesus, how you providing. I just came thinking of Jesus, how you opening doors right now. I just came thinking of Jesus for the closed doors. I just came thinking of Jesus, how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. I just came thinking of the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just came thinking of the Holy Spirit that's in this house right now, that's on air right now, that is touching us right now today, that it won't leave us alone. So Holy Spirit, please don't leave me alone. Holy Spirit, please don't leave me my sister alone. Holy Spirit, please don't leave my brother alone. Holy Spirit, rain on us right now. Rain on this ministry YouTube channel right now. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just came thinking of for your love. I just came thinking of for your faithfulness. I just came thinking of Jesus for who you are and what you have done and what you stand for. I just came thinking of Jesus for our blessing right now, our breakthrough right now, our miracle right now, our anointing right now, our deliverance right now, our double portion right now. I just came thinking of Jesus for our more than enough. I I just came thinking of Jesus for the help that's coming our way. I just came thinking for the connection and the resources, Jesus. I just came thinking for the rain. I just came thinking for our harvest that we will reap this year, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory. That's why I magnify and I exalt your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, good God Almighty. I just can't thank you enough because I'm in love with you, Jesus. I don't need nobody else but you, Jesus, and that's why I can't thank you enough because you always have my back. That's why I can't thank you enough. You love me more than anything. And I can't thank you enough. You got me out of many, many jams. You got me out of many situations, Jesus. And I just can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. In Jesus' holy mighty name, I just can't thank you enough. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. My sisters and my brothers, are y'all ready to have some praise and worship today? Or if, or, and if y'all ready to have some church, please turn your Bible to Genesis 3, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. That's Genesis 3, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen, because we about to have some church, we about to have some church today. God is about to speak some insight on somebody today. I'm telling you, my brothers. God spoke this message to me two days ago, and it's been marinating all in my spirit for the last two days. And I got to speak on it. It's because somebody's going through this right now today. God is about to speak to somebody right now today. You're going to say, wow, I really had no idea that's what it was. Listen to God's word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals. 
the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some, ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open. They realized they were naked, so they sold, sold, sold fig trees together and made coverings for themselves. Then if you turn your Bibles to, to um, Psalms, Psalms 23, verse 5, the Word of God said, I, I'm preparing, I am preparing a table for your enemies. Now, I want you to take Genesis 3, verses 1 through 7. Then I want you to go back and read Psalms 23, verse 5. God said, I'm preparing a table for your enemies. And today's message is when your marriage is confused or in a mess. And the reason why that your marriage is confused right now, the reason why that your marriage is in a mess right now, is because God has already prepared a table for you, my sisters, my brothers. The enemy is not going to come if the table is not prepared. The enemy is not going to come if it's not blessing on the table. The enemy is not going to come if it is not breakthrough on the table. The enemy is not going to come if there's a miracle on the table. The miracle, the enemy is not going to come if it's healing or if it's restoration on the table. The enemy only comes when the table has been set. That's why your marriage is so much chaos. That's why your marriage is driving you up the wall right now. That's why your marriage is so confused right now. That's why your marriage is in the mess right now. Because the enemy knows that God has already prepared a table for you. He tell you that in Psalms 23 verse 5. He said, I will prepare a table for who? For the enemy. And who's the, who's the enemy in this text in Genesis 3? The serpent. The serpent only came because the serpent knew that God has already prepared a table for Adam and Eve. The serpent didn't come in Genesis 1, not did it. No. The serpent didn't come in Genesis 2, not did it. No. The serpent only came when God has already prepared a table in the garden for Adam and Eve. God has already prepared a table for you in the garden, my sisters. God has already prepared a table for you right now, today, my brother, in the garden. And that's why the enemy is after your marriage. That's why the enemy has a hit after your marriage. It's because God has already prepared the table for you. I don't know who this word for right now today. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today. But I believe somewhere around the world right now that somebody's marriage has been in a lot of chaos right now. It's been hectic lately. It's been a mess lately. It's been confused lately. Your wife running her mouth and you don't know where it's coming from. Your husband part acting up right now. And you don't know where his attitude is coming from. It's because the enemy has a hit out on him and the enemy has a hit out on her because the enemy already know that God has already prepared a table for you. And what's on that table, it is blessings on that table. It's breakthrough on that table. It's miracles on that table. It's anointing on that table. It's deliverance on that table. It is healing on that table. It's providing on that table. It's restoration on that table. It's everything. Get more than what you can count and depend on. It's on that table. And that's the only reason why the enemy will come after your marriage. It's because of the table that God has already set up for you. Come on, somebody. You ain't telling me nothing. I ain't the only one who marriage in a mess right now. I ain't the only one who marriage confused right now. As I sat back and I looked at it, I'm like, but what's going on? My wife's been tripping lately. She's been bugging lately. And the more I kept looking at it, and God said, son, I need you to pay attention now. You gotta be a you gotta be aware of the enemy schemes. And the more I was looking at it, 
I say something, something's different. I say something's off. One minute she okay, then the next three days she raising sand, she acting crazy. And I was like, woman, what is wrong with you? Are you on, are you smoking something? Are you drinking something? Are oh, you know I don't smoke? You know I don't drink? I said, well, you gotta be doing something because you twisting your head, you're popping your eyes, you're popping your lips, you're, just, you're snapping your fingers. I don't know what's going on with you right now, but it's something going on. And God says, son, the reason why she like that. Is because I already prepared and set the table for you. Right now, your marriage is in the garden. You got to remember, when your marriage is in the garden, it's everything that you need and more in the garden. And the only time the enemy going to come out is when the table is already set and when God has you in the, and when God has you in the garden. But one thing about God, when God has already set and prepared the table for you, and He set you in the, and He set you in the garden and He set you in the garden, automatically God will move out of the way. As you see, when God set the table and he prepared it for Adam and he prepared it for Eve, whatever it is that Adam and Eve wanted, they had everything set for them in the garden. Their table was right there in the garden. Everything they needed. And the moment God left, who came up behind them? The serpent, the enemy. So right now, God has moved out of the way. Now, God has his eyes on you just to see what you're going to do. Are you going to listen to the serpent? Are you going to listen to the enemy? Are you going to listen to the haters? Or are you going to be obedient and trust God? Say, God, I know what I'm going through right now today. I know it's only a test right now just to see if I'm going to be obedient or disobedient towards you. God, I know. I know the enemy schemes. I know the enemy has a hit out on me. It's because he can't stand what's on the table. He can't stand what you have prepared for me. He can't stand that my marriage is already healed. He can't stand that my marriage is already restoration. He can't stand that my marriage has a blessing on it. He can't stand that my marriage has, has a miracle on it. He can't stand that my miracle has more than enough on it. So the enemy is going to continue to come. It's going to continue to come. It's going to continue to make confusion between y'all, my sisters, my brothers. It's going to continue to build up a mess is because the enemy can't stand the table that God has already set for you. See, but one thing about Adam, Adam should the one who should have been paying attention from the get-go. Adam kept his eyes off God. Adam chose a woman over God. And that's why his table came a mess. That's why his marriage was a mess. That's why his marriage is all confused because Adam should have knew better. And right now, God has stepped away. Just to see what you're going to do. Are you going to do the same thing Adam did? And choose the man or the woman over God? Because right now the enemy is after your wife. The only reason why the enemy is after your wife. Because the enemy knows that your wife has a spiritual man. And that spiritual man is going to please God. It's going to worship God. It's going to, it's going to do everything that God is saying because the enemy knows. That the man, the spiritual man and God has a bond. They know they have a connection. They know they they know they boys. They know they type. So right now the enemy is gonna bring some confusion in your house. It's gonna bring some mess in your house. It's gonna bring it's gonna bring a, a, a tight situation. Yes, your wife's gonna trip. But one thing that you gotta look at it, my brothers, it's not your wife. Yes, your wife, she's gonna snap her neck, she's gonna roll her eyes, she's gonna get jazzy. But one thing you gotta realize, my brothers, it's not your wife. It's not your wife. That's the enemy that's bringing confusion to the table. That's the enemy that's bringing a mess to the table. And that's why your wife is going off the way that she is going off. It's because of what's on the table. That's what I love about this scripture right here. Everything was already set for Adam and Eve. They ain't had to go nowhere. Everything was set for them right there, right there, in, that, right there in the garden. Then we notice that we're making it even more powerful when you go to Psalms 23, verse 5, when God said, I will prepare a table for the enemy. And you look at it and say, but why God will, why will God prepare a table for the enemy? Because God already know how the enemy is going to come. The enemy already know that God is going to bless you. The enemy already know once you cast everything to Jesus that your marriage is already healed. It's already, it's already been provided. It's already been restored. The enemy already know that God has already prepared a table for your marriage. Which is healing in your marriage. I mean, it's love in your marriage. 
It's forgiveness in your marriage. It's love in your marriage. And the end can't stand for somebody to be loving somebody. It can't stand when God is in the middle of your marriage. Right now, my brothers and my sisters, the point I'm making, a lot of you right now today that's having a, a, a hard time in your marriage is because the table's been set. God has already prepared a table for your marriage. It's in a garden. And the enemy has a hit out on your marriage because the enemy can't stand what's on that table. The enemy, can, the enemy cannot stand what God has already done for you. But you must do your part and be aware of the enemy's schemes. You must do your part and say, enemy, I know what you're trying to do. I know you're trying to bring some confusion. I know you're trying to bring some mess. But I pray right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, I, I rebuke every demonic stronghold that you have on my wife, over my, over my husband, over my brother's wife, over my sister's husband right now. I pray right now today that your head is already crushed right now. You're going to have no authority of this marriage. You have no authority on my house. You have no authority on my table. This is God's house. This is God's marriage. This is God's table. It's going to stay that way. So what you're trying to do is not going to work because I'm I'm aware of your schemes. I'm aware of what you're trying to do. You're trying to get it. You're trying to cause some mess. You're trying to cause some confusion. I know you, so I'm going to overlook you and say, God, I'm trusting you. I know what I'm going through right now today. I know this trial is on the test. I know this tribulation is on the test just to see am I going to be obedient or disobedient. But God, I'm going to give you my word right now today. I'm going to continue to be obedient because nobody comes before you. I'm always going to choose you first over my wife, no matter what. You come first. Adam went wrong. Adam chose his wife over God. Because the table's already set. God was testing them. Right now, God is testing you in your marriage. Right now, my brothers and my sisters, while your marriage has a table that's already set in the garden, and God already knows that the enemy has a hit on you, that's why he put your marriage right there in the garden with a table that's already prepared just to see what you are going to do. Are you going to be obedient or are you going to be disobedient? Are you going to listen and talk back to the enemy? Or are you going to continue to thank and praise Jesus while you're going through this test? Are you going to be disobedient to God? Or are you going to sit there and say, God, I'm going to trust you no matter what how this confusion looking like right now. God, I'm going to continue to trust you no matter what. It's a mess right now. God, my marriage is in your hand. I have no control of it, God. But one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to continue to thank you in the garden. I'm going to continue to praise you in the garden. I'm going to continue to worship you in the garden. I'm going to continue to lift your name up high in the garden because I know my marriage has a hit on it. I know that my marriage has a target on its back. But God, everything is in your hand. Because once I cast it and gave it to you, it don't belong to me no more. But I want to say thank you, Jesus, for preparing a table for my enemies in the garden. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now today. But when your marriage is in a confused state of mind and it's in the mess it's because God has already prepared a table for your enemies, but he prepared it right there in the garden. Because if you look, the, the enemy, they come nowhere else but in the garden. He didn't come in Genesis 1. He didn't show up in Genesis 2. He only showed them when God left as God has already prepared a table. Your marriage didn't get confused until God has left. It wasn't no mess until your marriage, until the table's already prepared and God left. I want you to open your eyes a little bit. I want you to open up your Bibles and start reading and make love to them. Then you'll understand what's going on in your marriage. You will have a better insight of what's going wrong in your marriage. If you know what God has done, and if you know that God has already prepared a table for your enemies, and you know that everything that God did in the garden, and when, when God prepared everything in the garden, because God left when it came to Genesis 3, it was only Adam and Eve. Eve was talking to the serpent, the serpent talking to her back, and it was Adam. God was gone. God didn't show back up until the serpent had tricked them. God didn't show back up until the test was over. They failed the test. Are you going to fail the test in your marriage today, my sister? Is the point I'm making. Are you going to fail the test 
in your marriage today, my brother, is the point I'm making. Because God is sent back and he is watching. What are you going to do? Are you going to pass the test? Are you going to pass the test? Or are you going to fail the test? Are you going to be disobedient? Or are you going to be obedient? Are you going to sit there and talk about to the serpent? Or are you going to praise God? Which one are you going to do? The choice is yours right now today. Because right now I know the, the heat is rising in your marriage. I know the temperature is going crazy right now in your marriage. I know your wife is acting a fool. I know that your husband is acting a donkey. But right now it's only a test. That's what you're going through. So what are you going to do right now today? What are you going to do? Because at the end of the day, it's only a test. Amen? Amen. I believe that this word, I believe that this anointing message has just spoken to somebody, has opened, gave somebody some insight, and has just spoken to somebody in a lot, a lot of ways. Now you know why your marriage is confused. Now you know why they, why your marriage is in a mess. It's because God has already prepared a table for your enemies. And the, and the table that God prepared for you is in the garden. That's why the enemy is after your husband. That's why the enemy is after your wife. Because the enemy can't stand the table that God has already prepared for you in a garden. That's all what it is. Look at it. Read it. That's Genesis 3, verses 1 through 7. Then I want you to read Psalms 23, verse 5. And what he said, I will. He said he think, or maybe, he said, I will prepare a table for your enemies. It's the enemy that's after your marriage. Because the enemy has a hit out on your marriage. It's because the table that God has already provided for you. Amen. Amen. That's some good stuff right there. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is Buddhist.lt. Always give Jesus the thanks. Always give him the praise. Always put him in first place. Continue to pray for one another. It doesn't matter if you know him. It doesn't matter if you know her. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I'm going to continue to lift y'all up in prayer and praise. Y'all guys continue to lift me up in prayer and praise. And God, we're going to thank you. We're going to continue to be obedient. We're going to get through this. Even though our marriage is in a mess right now. Even though our marriage is confused right now. But God, we're going to thank you. We're going to praise you. Because at the end of the day, we know it's only a test. And we just want our test. Victory is ours right now. Your marriage has been healed. It's been restored right now. I believe it. I declare it. I decree it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Victory is yours today. This is Serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.